Hello everyone and welcome again to another Bible study. Uh, today is Wednesday and so I want to continue our, um, our Wednesday tradition. We'll hear from some missionaries, we'll have some prayer time together and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I want to wish you a happy April. Uh, today is April 1st and so looking forward to, uh, to what God has in store for us for, uh, for the, next several, uh, the next several weeks. It looks like we are going to be meeting in this way. Um, for another several weeks, the president announcing um, that he's that we're extending all of the social distancing and um, and all of these uh, stay-at-home uh, orders and everything for uh, for another several weeks. And so um, we will do what we can, all right. And we'll talk about that as we go throughout as our lesson tonight. And I, I know we're uh, so many of you are looking forward to hearing again about prayer. We'll pick that up again tomorrow, Lord willing. And, uh, but tonight I want to I want to deal with a couple of those things this afternoon. Uh, I want to first of all I want to thank you so much for stepping up and uh, and for giving. Uh, we're able to get some bills paid. We're able to set some things aside, get some things squared away for um, for the beginning of the month uh, here. And uh, and so thank you so much. We've had several people who would uh, giving online and sending checks in and. Uh, even dropping some money off, and so I, I, I want you to know I appreciate that so so very much, and uh, and I love each each one of you uh, for uh, for that, and um, we have we have the opportunity. Um, our our mechanic Mark called me uh, just yesterday, and we have the opportunity to purchase um, another bus here coming soon. And, uh, and so please pray for wisdom, pray, pray for God's uh, will and God's direction uh, for that. It seems foolish to buy another bus right now since we can't pick anybody up with it. Um, but if this bus goes, uh, goes, does go up for auction, it'll be, uh, it'll be gone pretty quickly. And so, uh, you know, it also seems foolish to buy another bus when we only have, uh, we only have two drivers. And, uh, and so, but I think... Um, I think we should get more drivers, not fewer buses. Uh, so, but that's just me. All right. So, just pray for God's wisdom on that, and that God's will would be done. I, um, as we move forward here to our prayer time together, um, I wanted to let you know that um, I, I spoke with Tammy on Sunday, and uh, she's up in New York, and uh, she let me know that Brittany's dad, his name is Robert, he's over in Lancaster. And uh, he has been diagnosed with COVID-19 and uh, is not doing well at all. And uh, she let me know this morning, this Tuesday morning, that, um, that, he, that they put him on a ventilator. And, uh, and I reminded her just two things. That's number one, praise the Lord, there was a ventilator available. And, uh, and number two, the doctors are going to say, well, it's up to his body now to fight it off. But we know that all along, it's, it's always been up to the great physician. Uh, for healing and uh, and so we're in agreement on that and so uh, just pray for him his name is Robert and uh, you pray for him as this um, as this disease uh, begins now to affect people that we know and people connected with our church uh, there are three according to the county website there's three confirmed cases uh, of Barstow residents um, and so we know that it's here and of course last week we had our first confirmed case uh, right here in Barstow. Um, but it's been two weeks, and our county went from zero to, I believe right now, we're at 164, um, just in a matter of two weeks, and, and uh, four deaths. So 164 cases, four deaths. Um, so just continue to pray, continue to be wise, and again, we'll talk about that a little bit later uh, as, our, as our lesson tonight. I do want to hear from some of our missionaries. And uh, I have a few missionaries here. And what I want to do is I, I want us to hear from our missionaries, but I want to err on the side of safety. And All right. And um, so I'm going to hear from our missionaries, but I've, I've taken out all of their names. And, uh, and so we're just, um, just let you know where they are missionary to. And uh, if you are familiar with them, then you would know that. We do have a missionary in, in uh, the Ivory Coast, and this is sent by email. This is dated March 29th, so just a couple days ago. Uh, and he starts off with a quote that says, in the, in the blink of an eye, everything can change. So forgive often and love with all your heart. You may not have that chance again. 
He says, Dear Pastor and friends, the quote below certainly rings true today more than ever as things are changing so fast daily due to the ongoing crisis with COVID-19. Just as we're kicking off our spring program here, which included a new Sunday school outreach program and the training of nationals, the government called a halt to public gatherings of more than 20 people. Despite this, we're working with the pastor and uh, the deacons to spiritually feed the church members by use of social media, much like we are. Uh, during one of our last services, the Lord blessed with a young man from uh, Sierra Leone accepting Christ as a Savior. Uh, also, a few other folks came forward with spiritual needs. So God is blessing the work. We look forward to getting back to church services when that door opens. Please be in, in prayer for our pastor. As he, this is the national pastor as he continues uh, to have some health concerns due to his medication, medication dosage. And please pray for our son as he continues to see doctors um, about his Marfan syndrome and uh, may need surgery. Plus, he's still going, uh, uh, undergoing some other tests. May God help us all to heed his word because Jesus can come back at any time. We want to thank each of you for, your, for faithfully supporting us and praying for us. We pray for you and your ministries, and we're mindful of the burdens you are carrying at this time. God bless you for your faithfulness, your missionaries to the Ivory Coast. We have a missionary in, uh, in Russia we'd like to hear from. This is dated April of uh, 2019. He writes, Dear Pastor and Praying Friends, Coronavirus in Russia. God is still the same. I know that most of us know this and praise the Lord for it. Many new challenges have arisen with the threat of COVID-19. As I write this letter, all international flights into Russia have stopped. There are currently 1,036 confirmed cases of coronavirus in Russia, with the number of new, new cases growing every day. Nationwide, all of the schools have closed. Paid work holidays has been declared, and anyone who had been abroad and not obeyed a mandatory self-quarantine period of two weeks faces seven years in prison. All stores are closed except for pharmacies and grocery stores. While there are 703 con cases confirmed in Moscow alone, with 14 in Samara, that's where they live, uh, we expect that number to increase. Vladimir Putin has initiated the largest package of increases for special programs in the history of our country. Uh, since our congregation is staying home, we're going to live stream our services for the first time in our history. I feel very blessed in that we just purchased the equipment to do that in January. If we had to buy it right now, it would be impossible. We're praying for you and appreciate your support and prayers uh, that God would use us greatly, your missionaries in Russia. And uh, also, uh, missionaries in Mexico. He writes, Today my wife went, to, uh, went with one of the ladies of the church to visit a very sick lady. She's 32 years old and she's dying of cancer. Uh, about a month ago, her son started to come to church. Uh, he was listening to her, um, my wife was listening to her story of her sickness and how things were going. Shortly thereafter came the time to talk about her salvation and to show her from the Bible how to go to heaven. Uh, this lady held the Bible and, uh, in her hands and read the verses for herself. My wife asked if she had ever read the Bible. She said she never did. My wife asked her if she ever held a Bible before. She said no. This lady received or believed the gospel of Jesus and asked him for eternal life. Uh, a few years ago, her daughter started coming to church. And she went to camp with us one year. Not long after that, uh, after camp, she was killed by the cartels. But she also received Christ as her Savior. So God's doing a tremendous work there in, uh, in that one family. Another lady and her family came uh, come faithfully to church and have done so for many years. Her daughter is married. Um, uh, her daughter married a young man, and uh, he got saved at our church recently when they came to visit, as they live about 250 miles away. He's always calling his mother-in-law, asking her questions about the Bible. And just recently, he left his job because there was so much evil going on there. But we prayed for him to find a good job, and the Lord gave him one that's closer to home and better pay. Uh, at his new job, his boss was uh, asking him questions about the Bible. So he started calling his mother-in-law again to ask her what to say and how to answer these questions. It is a blessing to see God work in the lives of our families. Uh, please pray for this young man to be saved. This is his boss. We're happy to share with you 
that our daughter just called to tell us that she got engaged and uh, they are planning to be married in July. The young man came to visit us in Mexico last year and we got to know him. He called me asking for uh, permission to tell uh, my daughter that he loves her. We're so happy for them. Now, since our last letter, uh, our church people's led 43 souls to Christ and my wife and I led another 40 to Christ uh, to trust Christ as our Savior. Thank you for standing behind us, helping us in the work of God, yours for souls, uh, your missionaries in Mexico. And uh, we certainly praise the Lord for our missionaries and uh, we need to continue to pray. Pray for our missionaries, pray for one another, and that, God would, uh, that God would continue to use each one of us to spread the gospel and uh, to, to be our missionaries, uh, to be missionaries for Him. So let's take these requests to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for your love for us. We thank you, Lord, for your, uh, for your word. And Lord, I pray that you would help us now as we consider our missionaries, the three that we've heard from in, in various countries. And Lord, I pray that you would um, do a work in their hearts, their lives, and through their ministries. Lord, I pray that their ministries would continue to go forward. I pray, Lord, that during this time their, their ministries would grow. And they would find new contacts and new outreach uh, opportunities. Uh, Lord, I'm reminded now of another missionary I heard from um, who's still on deputation. And uh, Lord, what a, what, a, what a turn of events to begin deputation and now church services can't even meet. And uh, so that puts deputation on hold for any missionaries uh, looking to go out in the near future. And so we pray for these missionaries as well. The ones we support, the ones we don't. Lord, I pray that you would, uh, you would help us, help us, Lord, to be an encouragement to them, be a blessing to them any way that we can. Uh, Lord, I pray that we'd continue our giving so that we can continue to uh, support our missionaries and, uh, and continue to pray for them. And uh, Lord, I pray that you, would, um, uh, that you would help them, especially during this time. Uh, so many things changing on a, on a daily basis, really. And, uh, and so much uncertainty. Lord, I pray that you would have your hand in all of these things. But Father, I pray that you would be with the, uh, the requests of each one of us for our church family uh, who are ill. And, uh, and Lord, for our, our, our friends, family members who are not well. Lord, I pray you know each need. And I pray that you would touch, uh, touch hearts, touch lives, heal bodies. Lord, we pray for Robert over in Lancaster as he's been... Uh, diagnosed with this COVID-19. Lord, I pray that you touch his body, heal him, and uh, that you would just draw him close to yourself and that you would uh, allow us an opportunity to minister to them through this time. Lord, I pray for the, uh, for our, our men in, in uniform. I pray for our first responders, especially on the front lines and uh, coming into contact with many, many people. And uh, Lord, I pray that you keep them safe, keep them healthy. Lord, keep them well. I, my, my heart breaks to hear of another um, officer being slain in the line of duty over in Phoenix this week. And uh, Lord, I pray that you just keep, our, keep our, our, our law enforcement safe. Those on the front lines uh, as, far, as first response, fire departments, ambulance workers, um, emergency room staff, urgent care clinic staff, nurses in the nursing homes. So many outbreaks in the nursing homes right now. Oh, Lord, we need your help. And, uh, Lord, I pray that you would be with those that we know um, that, are, that are working these lines, some of these doctors, physicians working these front lines uh, during this time. Lord, I pray that you would keep them, uh, keep them safe and that they would be able to, um, that we would all be able to come through this uh, just trusting you a little bit more and, uh, and loving you a little bit more. Lord, we pray for your will and direction to be done in each one of our lives. We pray for our missionaries. We pray for these, especially that we've heard from tonight. Um, some whose, whose churches are undergoing um, a tremendous change right now and various trials and uh, various different things. Lord, we thank you for the blessing of, uh, of your provision in a time of need before the time of need was really known and before the need itself was really known. And allowing that missionary in Russia to get the, the equipment they need to live stream. And uh, before they even knew that that was uh, going to be necessary, needed. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. 
We thank you for your safety, your provision. We thank you so much for these uh, reports of souls being saved all over the world, literally all over the world. And uh, Lord, we pray that you'd allow us a continued part in that, uh, in that endeavor. Lord, we just pray that for our uh, time of meeting now as we look into your word and as we study your word here for these next few moments, Lord, I pray that you give us wisdom, um, that we would see uh, from your word the, uh, the things we need to do and how we need to approach um, this, uh, this pandemic and, uh, and how we can be an encouragement to somebody else and, uh, and just what you would desire of us during this time. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, let's take our Bibles here for a minute. Let's find 2 Timothy chapter number 1. 2 Timothy chapter number 1. This is certainly a time, as our missionary had mentioned, this is a time of great uncertainty. We never know one day to the next what, um, what, it, what the government's going to do, what our government leaders are going to do, and, uh, and what they're going to declare is, uh, is needed and necessary at any given moment. And, uh, and so we need, to be, um, we need to be mindful that we can trust God and that, we are, uh, that He's still in control, He's still on the throne, and everything is okay as far as God is concerned, as far as eternity is concerned. Everything's fine. Everything is right on schedule. God, as we've mentioned so many times, God is the master orchestrator of all events. And so we don't need to fret, we don't need to worry, we need to trust, and, uh, and we need to obey Him. I want to take um, just one more break from our study in prayer. Lord willing, we'll get back to it tomorrow. But our, uh, take a break here from our study in prayer. And I want to look at this one verse, just one verse. But I believe there's some wisdom here and that God will help us to know how to respond to this. And I've, I've fielded so many uh, comments and so many things, um, so many things being different things being said uh, about how how we should respond. What what should you know? How is a Christian supposed to respond to this? And uh, and so we what we're seeing, and, and as is typical, we see two very different extremes. And uh, and we don't want to be on either extreme. There's some people who are saying, well, um, hey, listen. It's virus time. We're not going to do anything. We can't do anything. We can't go out. We're not going to do anything. And so they've they've quit everything. And then we see there's some to say, hey, nobody's going to tell me what to do. Not even a virus. Um, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. We we can't have either one of those extremes in our life. Uh, but what we want to do is have a balanced view of what God would have us to do. So we see here in Second Timothy chapter number one. Look down to verse number seven. Verse number seven. Uh, a verse that we like to claim many times. He says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Of power, of love, and of a sound mind. What's the proper response to this, uh, to this virus, for a Christian, to this pandemic, something that is affecting us globally? What's the proper response for a Christian? Well, number one, it's not fear. Well, we know that straight from the text, and that's the part that we like to claim. Uh, now, this is completely contrary to all of to the majority of the headlines that we read today. Starting back in January and February, we heard about the fear of coronavirus. Places are being shut down out of fear of the coronavirus. Co coronavirus fears crippling communities. Uh, these stores, such and such as closed out of fear of coronavirus, such and such canceled out of fear of coronavirus. Uh, uh, friends, we're not afraid of coronavirus. Not, that's, uh, that's, why, that's not why we're not meeting. All right? Well, that's not why we're not having church services, that we're suspending our church services. God constantly tells his people in his word over and over and over again, fear not, fear not. Fear not. In fact, the word fear not appears 62 times in Scripture. Most of the time, it's God telling His people, don't fear. Fear not. Everybody just calm down. That's what He's saying. But Jesus, uh, it's very close to it, and, and it's the, the, 
uh, the sentiment, really, behind what Jesus told his disciples in John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Fear not. Everything is okay. Just everybody relax. Everybody just calm down. God tells us this over and over and over again. God does not deal in uncertainty. God does not deal in fear. Sometimes people ask me, Pastor, what should I do? Uh, these are my options. What do you think God would have me to do? And I remind them. I, I remind them, first of all, I'm not God. I don't have a will for your life. I'm not the Holy Spirit. I'm not that little voice whispering to you. My wisdom for you, what I can tell you, is that God doesn't deal in fear. God doesn't deal in uncertainty. God deals in certainties and in peace. It's a peaceful time. How can a Christian in such a time of turmoil, how can, how can anybody find peace in any of this? Well, it's through the Holy Spirit. God's not given us a spirit of fear. But he's given us a spirit of, of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, in, in all of this, uh, Hebrews 13, verse number 6, says, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I shall not fear what man shall do to, unto me. Hey, listen. When God is your helper, there's never a need to fear anything. So that's not why we're not meeting. And, and as difficult as it is to say, and as difficult as it is a time for us to work through some of these things, we will continue to not have services together. Now, I've had some great suggestions given to me about Resurrection Sunday. And I know that this is a special time for believers everywhere, all across the, all across the globe. It's a special time. It's a, it's a time where we, that we set aside specifically to remember the whole gospel. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Savior. And that day that we set aside to, as Resurrection Sunday. Oh, it's a special time. And I've had some great ideas given to me about how we can meet together. Uh, where we can have a loudspeaker and, and, and park our cars. We can go to the game square. We can meet outside somewhere. But we'll continue to abide by the no public gatherings order which has been given. And that would, that would include meetings outdoors. And it would include meeting together in, in any way. And, I, and I, Listen, I understand that it's, it's a, that's a difficult thing to say. I understand that we're in a difficult spot here. But God knows that. And God's fine. God's okay. Now listen, if we must continue to obey our civil authorities. Now, as I say that, that the, the, the discussion doesn't stop right here with what we're not going to do. But the question remains, uh, and the question that must be answered is why? What is the purpose behind not meeting together? What is the purpose behind our obedience to, uh, to what these, uh, these public health officials and these government officials, what's the purpose of what they're trying to tell us? And that, we, can, we can answer that, and, uh, and that'll, help us, um, that'll help us to know how better to respond positively. Now, the truth is, if this verse stopped right here, and if we didn't have some other verses to guide us, then I would, if it just says, hey, God's not giving us a spirit of fear, period. Well, that leaves it wide open. Then I'm going to do whatever God tells me, I'm going to do whatever I want to, because I'm not afraid of anybody. But that lack of fear becomes arrogance real quick. So we have other scriptures to guide us. And the truth is, if the verse stopped here, if the verse absolutely shut down right here, God's not giving us a spirit of fear, I would probably agree with that pastor in Florida who held services in spite of uh, the orders to, to not do so till he was arrested this week. But, but God does give us the other side. So if the verse stopped here, I'd say, yeah, then let's meet. We're not afraid. We're not afraid of a virus. 
We're not afraid of what anybody has to say. We're not afraid of jail time. We're not afraid of, of the government. We're not afraid of any of these things. Let's just meet together. But the verse doesn't stop there. The verse gives us the positive side. He gives us how are we to respond then. God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. Number one, we have and we are to respond in the spirit of power. Of power. God gives us the power to do what we ought to do. God gives us the strength. God gives us the power to do what we ought to do. Now, let me be clear. If this was a, a government mandate that was part of an attack on the one and, and seeking to silence the gospel of the one true living God, we would gladly disobey it. We would meet together. We would preach. We'd be arrested. We'd be persecuted. And that's what this is all about. But that pastor being arrested in Florida, that's not persecution. And I'll explain why in just a minute. God gives us the power to do what we ought to do. What we should do. God gives us the strength to do what is right to do. In, and certainly, God has given strength to many, many, many martyrs. To many, many, many persecuted Christians persecuted believers all across the globe. We pray for them. We pray for those that are persecuted because of the gospel. We pray for them. We don't pray that God would remove the persecution. We pray that, they would, that God would give them the strength through that persecution. To endure through that persecution. Several months ago we studied through the book of Ecclesiastes. And I want to read Ecclesiastes, a few verses here from Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Starting in verse 2, Solomon tells us, I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment. You know what that means? Obey your civil authority. When the king gives a commandment, obey the king's commandment. But that verse doesn't stop there either. He says, I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment, and that in regard of the oath of God. So we must balance these two things. Keep the king's commandment, and obey God. Verse 3, be not hasty to go out of his sight, stand not in an evil thing, for he doeth whatsoever pleaseth him. Verse 4, where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? Whoso keepeth the commandment, shall feel no evil thing. And a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. In other words, this is the, this is the counsel, this is the advice from the wisest man to walk this earth. Obey your civil authority until it's the right time. You, you obey your civil authority and you obey God and, and you discern time and judgment. What time, uh, what the timing is. When do we begin to say, wh where is that line between what we should do, what we, what we want to do, what, uh, obeying God rather than man? Where is that line? You're going to need some wisdom. You're going to need some wisdom in that. But what we have here, uh, what we have in our society today right now, it's, it's not a silencing of the gospel. It's not an attack of scripture. It's a mandate for the health and the safety of people everywhere. So, well, that, that doesn't apply to me. Well, yes, it does. Because God is not only... Now, if the verse stopped right here, God has given us the spirit of power. Then we would continue meeting. Because we can do what we ought to do. We can do. God gives us the power to do that. He gives us that ability. He gives us that strength. But that's not all He gives us either. He gives us a spirit of power and a spirit of love. In the spirit of love, we stay home. It's not fear. 
that keeps us home. It's love that keeps us home. Loving others. Listen, friend, if you love your neighbor, right now, stay away from them. If you love that person, stay away from them. You, I don't, sometimes I don't think, there's so many variables to this disease, to this virus, that we don't even understand yet. That's why it's such a big deal right now. It's not what we do, that's what we don't know about it. That's the problem. You understand you can carry this virus and not know it for up to 14 days. Four, that's two weeks. Now listen, this week, t today, right now, this is the second Wednesday session. It's been 14 days. You could have contracted this virus the first YouTube session ago and just now begin to start feeling symptoms. That means for the last two weeks, you would have been carrying this virus and you would have been spreading it around to anybody that you, in, def, in your defiance, and doing what you, uh, whatever you want to do, you'd have been spreading around for two weeks. Wow. So it is an act of love to stay home. It's an act of love not to visit one another. We must stop. We gotta stop putting others at risk unnecessarily. That's what the loving thing to do is. If you're sick, stay home. Now there, and I know there have been times where I, or I don't do that myself. But as I said, don't put others at risk unnecessarily, either. There's some folks in our church. They have a Sunday school class, they come, if they're not feeling well, they come, they do their Sunday school class, they try to keep their distance, they try to maintain a, a safe distance, but then they do their class and then they go home. I'm okay with that. Listen, if you're not feeling well, stay home. If you have necessary things that you need to do, do those necessary things and then go home. Stop putting other people at risk. God has given us a spirit of love and out of love for one another. We should stay home. He also gives us a spirit of a sound mind. A sound mind. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. What does a sound mind, what does that mean? That means we need to do what makes sense to do. So this is, this is not like the slothful man in Proverbs who does nothing because there might be a lion in the streets. I might be killed today, so I'm just going to stay home and do nothing. That's not being lazy. In fact, I, I just heard somebody on the radio earlier today lamenting. We're grieving as a, as a nation. We're grieving not being able to work. And to a degree, that's true. So we're not like the slothful man who's doing nothing. But we're also not putting ourselves and others at risk unnecessarily either. So we have to balance these two things. How is it that I can have this... Have, I've not been given a spirit of fear. I'm not afraid. And I have the power. How do I balance that? Well, first of all, with love. How's the best way you can show someone that you love them right now? Well, don't make them sick. That's a start. What's the, well, then what? How, how am I supposed to know that? This is why he also gives us a spirit of a sound mind. Doing what makes sense. Doing what needs to be done. Trusting God while obeying the order to just stay home. This requires discernment and wisdom. It doesn't mean that you don't do what you need to get done. It doesn't mean that you stay home, you bar the door, and you starve to death. That's not what he's talking about. That would be fear. Now listen, as I just mentioned earlier, three cases of confirmed Barstow residents. Three confirmed cases right here in Barstow. It is here. Has been, probably for a while. We're just now understanding that. 
So we don't stay home and lock the door and don't go anywhere. Not even to not even for necessities, not even for food. But we also don't go to the block party and get infected, infect everybody else either. Well there has to be a balance. So we so we must do what needs to be done. I come to you not from my home today, but from the office. Why is that? Because it's what needs to be done. We need this time together. And, and, I, and we need, I need the internet access here at the office instead of at my, house, at, at my house. That's the need. I'm just being honest, that's the need. That doesn't mean that I go and, and uh, shake hands and hug everybody along the way. I go, I do what I need to get done, and then I go back home. What else? How else can we have the spirit of a sound mind? A sound mind is doesn't perpetuate uh, nonsense from the babblings of media. We, I've heard so much nonsense of, about all of this. It, it, some of it's not true. So it just... Don't listen to it. Guys, listen. Get off. If you're, if you're just glued to the news, you got to stop. You've got to stop. There's absolutely nothing but coronavirus on the news. Just stop. Get into the Word. Find, discover something true from God's Word. Dwell on something. Think on something that is true from God's Word. We, we don't operate out of fear. But that's all I've heard out of the media these last two weeks. It's the fear, a fear, a fear-driven this, a fear-driven that, because of fear this, because of fear that. Well, none of that applies to me. As soon as they say because of fear, it doesn't apply to me. That's not me. That, I'm not the one they're talking to then. Because that's not the spirit that God's given to me. But a power of love and of a sound mind. Because God gives me the power. Now listen, we live in a day unlike any other. The blessings of today's technology allowing us to meet like this. Wow. This would have been unheard of during the Spanish flu. <laughs> it's unheard of. In any other period of time in history, we have such a blessing to be able to meet like this. So let's take advantage of it. God's given us this power. God's given us this ability Let's use it to its fullest. But God's also given us a spirit of love. Of love. My love for one another motivates me to stay away right now. My, my love for my family motivates me not to pick this virus up and carry it home. It's also given us a, a spirit of a sound mind. Know the truth. Know what's true. Listen for what is true. I know this is a, quite a different message for us this afternoon. But I want to take time, and again, Lord willing, we'll be back on, on our study on prayer tomorrow. Lord willing. But let's not get sucked down into, uh, in, into the world's way of thinking. Of a fear driven, of being fear driven on this thing. That's just not from the Spirit of God. God's given us a spirit of power to do what's right, of love to love one another, and of a sound mind to know the difference, to know what to do. Father, we thank you so much for your word, for the truth of your word. We thank you for the spirit that you give to us, not of fear. We thank you for the power that you give to us to do what's right. We thank you for the love that you give to us to share with others your love. We thank you for the benefits of a sound mind to know the truth and to act accordingly and to not disseminate uh, foolishness and false information, but to know the truth and not to worry about all of these things, not to fret over any of these things and not to let our heart be troubled, but to just not fear. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, for the ability that you've given to us to have these continued meetings in this form and in this way. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings upon us, upon our missionaries, and we pray your blessing, continued blessing upon them for their safety. Lord, we do pray 
that uh, that you'd be with these that we that we know are are, are ill, we know are struggling, and uh, Lord, no doubt there's some in our uh, some watching the videos uh, with uncertainties financially. Lord, I pray you give us wisdom, help us to know uh, what the next right step for us is, and we'll give you the honor and glory for that. We pray that you'd keep us uh, safe and healthy and well. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Until next time, my friends, God bless you. Have a great day.